Hey, y'all. It's one of those vlog things. So today, this time, and this... Fuck. What's up, everybody? It's time for another vlog. And from this vlog, we're gonna talk about my love for making music. But first, we need to mow the lawn. Well, the backyard's done. Let's move on to the front, shall we? found that uh, no matter how shitty your yard is it always looks good once it's mowed I'm tired I'm sweating like crazy and uh, I need to change my clothes and uh, make a run and then we'll continue on with this and uh, how's that sound all right so I'll be right back Change my shirt. Here we are. This is uh, this is my studio where all the <laughs> magic happens. So, got my uh, monitor speakers. These are nothing special. Um, they're cheap. And we got my rack mount EQ, which I never use. My tuner, which I do use. Um, I got a uh, electro harmonics. Um, metal muff and a decimator 2 noise gate bottle of Mountain Dew and my PC which I originally built for gaming and streaming <sighs> so you guys want to see the guitars this is a BC Rich Carry King V 6 string have it tuned to drop A baritone strings. This right here is just a cheap five string Ibanez bass. Nothing too special. Um, also tuned to drop A and drop D. This, this is El Cheapo. Um, 
I got this guitar for $30. Um, it's not special, it doesn't sound all too crazy. Um, the fret work on the side here is so sharp and nasty because I did a terrible job of it that it cuts up my finger when I play it, but it does have a decent tone, so I use it. This is my Jackson 8 string right here. This is tuned to standard. Uh, it's also a fan fret, fan frets. Um, so this is tuned to standard. Um, what I mean by standard though is that the top six strings are tuned to the standard E tuning. And then there's a uh, low B and an even lower F sharp. Uh, I've been using this one a lot. Um, this one, uh, you can't just jump onto something like this. This takes a little bit of uh, time to mess with. What's this? Also, you're going to have to kind of excuse me. A few days ago, I bit my tongue and it hurts like hell. And it's all cut up in there. And um, so it's hard for me to speak a bit. So if I don't enunciate or I sound like I have a speech impediment, that's why. Or I might just have a speech impediment. I have been playing music now long enough to where I should be a better musician than I am. <laughs> um, I could play guitar like crap. I could play a piano like crap. I could play the drums like crap. I could play the bass like crap. And I just arrange those into something that actually sounds okay. Where did this all start? I don't know. I really don't know. When I was a little kid, um, I used to love Eddie Rabbit and the band Kiss. Even though I had never heard a Kiss song. I just saw footage of them one time on news, on news broadcast, I don't know what. And basically all I saw was Paul Stanley smash his guitar on stage and I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. And for some reason I liked Eddie Rabbit. I think it was probably for that Rainy Night song. I don't know. My, my mom and dad used to buy me these little plastic uh, yellow and black acoustic guitars. They were just toy guitars, nothing major to them. And they had to buy me several of them because I smashed a lot. Because I used to sit in my bedroom and pretend that I was playing at a show with Eddie Rabbit and Kiss. Look, I was a kid, what do you want me to say? But I don't think I ever really took music all that seriously until I got older. Like 13 or 14 years old. Um, I had bought my first real guitar. It was a piece of shit. I got it for like $30 from a buddy of mine. And I had a little Gorilla 2 amp that I bought at um, a rinky-dinky place for like $80. My grandma bought it for me. Um, that's kind of how it started. I didn't know how to tune a guitar. I didn't know how to really play a guitar. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But all I knew was, at that time, I was into Metallica. I was into Megadeth. I was into bands like Testament. And I wanted to do that. I did start taking guitar lessons at um, a place called Eclipse Music. I'll hopefully be filming a vlog from there because that shop was a huge part of my life for a very, it still is. A lot of these guitars that I have here were bought there. A lot of the equipment that I have was bought there. Shout out to Eclipse. Thanks, dude. I know I've never really been much of a, an open person. I don't really open up a whole lot. So music is pretty much the only way I can do it. Also, I was picked on a lot. I was bullied. Um, now, bullying in my day is a lot different than what people describe bullying now. I would argue to say that what they call bullying now isn't even bullying, but it's neither here nor there. Um, and to deal with bullying back in my day, you had to fight. And I fought a lot. Um, sometimes I won, sometimes I didn't, but that wasn't the point somebody was bullying you, you stood up to them and all you had to do was fight them. You didn't have to beat them. Just fight them. It wasn't until I was probably in uh, ninth, 10th grade before it eventually stopped. And as an insurance policy, um, I made friends with a group of people who my parents would 
considered the wrong crowd. They're probably right. But the thing about them was is that they were loyal, and 90% of them you didn't want to mess with. Smoky down here. You know, it also helped that we we're all into the same, you know, type of music. We we're all very much into heavy metal. Um, it's what we'd love to do, and I wanted to play it, and that's what I did. It was nice. Now, I've 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 been in a lot of bands um, in my day. Uh, some that no longer exist. Some that have gone on to do wonderful things. Uh, but there are two two that I remember the most and I, you know, I'm very fond of a band I formed with my buddy Jason um, we started a band called <laughs> Flesh Pile we were a very fast mean, hardcore intricate death metal band uh, we got together with two other friends who were in another band and we just went with it there were five of us well, thing is, there was another buddy of ours named Aaron. Uh, he was a, a, a fantastic artist, and he hung out with us all the time. He um, didn't play any instruments in the band. He didn't write anything for the band. He didn't, other than do art for the band and design the band's logo. But he was always considered like the sixth member of Flesh Pile. He was a cool dude. You know, I, I, in fact, he lives right down the street from me. Jason and I were the creative force of that band um we wrote pretty much all the music um one thing I think Jason and I felt that we didn't want to be like every death metal band you know we didn't believe that every song had to have a guitar solo we didn't believe that every song had to be blasting fast all the way through but eventually I mean we were young and at that time, we were into that kind of music, and we just kind of, our influences kind of split. The idea of, you know, getting together with Jason and all the other guys and just bringing that band back into fruition, it's always a fun idea when you think about it. But realistically, even if we did, it would be a completely different monster than it was. Um, another band I remember, I didn't end up joining this band until many, many years later, um, was a band called Six, <laughs> and I, I, I absolutely fell in love with them. I went to uh, a place called The Quest, and they had this small room upstairs called the Ascot Room, and they were playing up there, and the bass player comes out with his mask on, a ball gag, and he's wearing a mini skirt, <laughs> but they were just brutal, and they were mean, and they had this groove to them, and it was just, just so unique and crazy. It wasn't really like the band and the members that I was particularly fond of, although I loved those guys to death. But um, there was this one guy and his wife, Jason and Misha, and they kind of played the same role that Aaron did with Flesh Pile. They were like the additional members of the band. In fact, they even gave us a thousand dollars to record an album. Um, Jason. Uh, passed away many years ago uh, from an un un undiagnosed heart condition, uh, much like what took down John Ritter. Um, and that was shortly after um, they had moved uh, to California. Uh, but they, you know, Jason was cool, man. Jason was my roadie. Uh, Jason, if I needed him, he was always there. He was a cool dude. You know, I missed them. I miss them both. Now the name Chunks, that name was given to me when I was in a band for a short period of time called Nacho Mama's Crew. <laughs> they were kind of like a heavy metal rap group. Um, a lot of babysitting took place, but they gave me that name because of my guitar sound. Um, I really wanted that deep, nasty, dark, crunchy tone so I would play out of a normal guitar amp, but I would plug that guitar amp into a bass cabinet to give me that tone, and that's how I got my name, Chunks. Now I've 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 been into a lot more bands that I could get into, and I just I just don't want to because they're really not as memorable 
as Six and Flesh Pile were. But, you know, the band thing kind of ended um, when my ex became pregnant with Lil Six. Um, priorities had to change. And, uh, which was fine because the, you know, the band I was in at that time really wasn't making me happy anyway. Um, I just kind of wanted to move on. And I kind of just stopped playing altogether for for quite a few years. It wasn't until recently, you know, um, when I started doing music again. Um, and it's been fun. It's been great. Uh, music has been more of a passion to me than streaming on Twitch, gaming, any of that stuff. It's just what I love to do more than anything. Now I just have, I have more freedom. I can just sit down here and I can write a song, something simple, and write it the way I want it. And I've been doing them live and then uploading those songs to SoundCloud, which you can find soundcloud.com slash in six chunks. It's just nice to not have to write music for other people. That's really the big thing for me. I write music for me, and that's it. I don't write it for you. I don't write it for them. I write it for me. And if you enjoy it, great. But understand, I didn't write that song for you. <sighs> There's really much more to talk about. I really, <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, I didn't want this to be a very long vlog. I really didn't. Um... So I kind of shortened everything down, but you kind of get the gist of my background on all of this, um, on my music and why I love it so much. It helps me get out aggression. It helps, it gives me another creative outlet and that's really all it is. And I love doing it and I like sharing it with you guys. I don't know if you guys like it. It doesn't matter. So... Anyway, that's, that's, I think that's where I'm going to leave you all. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to edit this down and get it uploaded. Um, if you like what you saw, give it a like. Um, I, could always, I always love another sub to the channel. Um, you can check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash in6chunks. I stream there at least three times a week. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at in6chunks. And uh, those two new songs be premiering the same day this comes out uh marching in darkness and a chill black on soundcloud.com slash in six chunks so go check them out see what you think i don't expect them to blow your mind but i enjoy it so thank you all for watching fist bumps see you next time
that good? Good.